Hello and welcome back to the third part of everything you need to do to apply to college. So, you've got everything you need in order, you've started completing your application, and now you're writing your responses. That is probably the hardest part. Where do you even start? What is the difference between all the response types? We are here to help you go over that. Hi, I remain Anika Nagpal, and this is Doing the Hard Part. Before moving into the fun stuff of writing your essays and all, you must know and prepare for application fees. Most colleges require a fee to submit applications. Have a form of payment ready or see if you can access fee waivers or a kind of fee-related scholarship you can apply for. Also, if your state does a free application day of sorts, prepare your application to submit on that free day. Also, remember to check each component of your applications. This is important if you are using different application hosts as some schools use different ones, such as the Common App, Coalition, or HBCU. Each host asks for relatively the same information, but make sure to double check and not assume that since one host asks for something, the other will as well. Now, let's write those essays. Certain colleges will have a strict essay prompt, while others will allow you to choose a prompt from the ones they provide. If you get to choose a prompt, think about which one resonates with you. Which prompt brings a story or experience of your life to mind so you can reflect on it in the essay? Start drafting an outline and then fill it in as you got. Maybe you're only able to narrow the prompt list options down to two instead of one. Make an outline for both and see which one feels right. If you're still stuck, have a second pair of eyes skim your outline and offer insights. Planning your application is crucial. Think about how you can highlight different aspects of your experiences and strengths. Use your application to tell a well-rounded story about who you are. Make sure each part of your application, from the essays to the activity list, contributes to this narrative. Okay, great. Outline the essay prompt that resonates with you the most. What does that even mean? What kinds of things should you mention, especially if it asks you to only highlight a few or finite number of experiences that relate to the prompt? Focus on the activities that have had the most impact on you and where you've had significant accomplishments. Quality over quantity is key. Highlight leadership roles, unique experiences, and anything that shows your passion and dedication. While prioritizing the activities can be challenging, having a ranking ready to go will make the application writing process much simpler. When choosing which activities to write about in your essays, know that you don't have to just stay limited to the activities you have listed in the section of the application, where you simply list and describe them. This can help you demonstrate your qualifications, especially ones that you maybe didn't have room to list within the application, and shows the impact they have had on you. On that note, the experiences you talk about in your essays don't have to be the ones you would put on your resume, either. They can be any kind of life experience that helped you grow, something that you think could help describe what you are working to become. Something that changed the trajectory of the way you approached something, etc. For instance, taking care of family after school, working on a farm, or doing a job that requires a lot of time and effort. Now you might be wondering if there are any kinds of resources you will have for this portion of the process, specifically, artificial intelligence. There is a good balance between properly utilizing AI versus abusing its power. You can ask AI to spell check, give suggestions, and edit here and there. You can even ask AI to analyze the essay prompt to give you ideas on where to start the prompt. You cannot, however, ask AI to write you the essay itself. AI detectors are used in the application reading and analyzing process, so if you're caught, you could well be facing academic repercussions. Once you have completed a draft, proof, review, and proof again. Typos and errors can leave a bad impression and even maybe show carelessness. Go through your entire application multiple times. Read it out loud and ask others to read it out loud as well. Fresh eyes can catch a mistake that maybe you have missed. This is a tedious part of the process and I know all you want to do is stop reading the same thing and just hit submit. I can promise you that rereading allowed me to change my mind on a few things and submit what I thought was a better essay than the one I had before. Remember, these applications may seem daunting, 
but know that application platforms such as Common App, Coalition, etc., you can save your changes, so you do not have to do it in one go. You can do bits and pieces at a time. Lastly, let's discuss the role of our parents and loved ones with us through this crazy process. They can be a great support system and be there for you when things get stressful. They can help proofread, provide suggestions, keep you organized, and keep you motivated. Do remember though, this is your application process, so your voice and your experiences should shine through. Take your time, be thoughtful, and stay true to yourself. We are always here if you need us. Stay tuned for part four of the Everything You Need to Do to Apply to College series, which walks you through preparing to hit that submit button. Best of luck.